Today I'm here to give you a breakdown of Comic-Con and whether tabling at Artist Alley is right for you. We'll cover the key things like the application process, planning of the logistics and equipment you'll need, what products to sell, the quantities, pricing, packaging, and the booth hardware and table setup, along with other insider tips. Comic-Con is a multi-day event held in convention centers in cities around the globe. Although originally focused on comic books and science fiction fantasy themes, it has over the years expanded to include broader genres of entertainment related themes. In terms of the genre, as a traditional visual artist who creates black and white line art of mostly birds, from my perspective, Artist Alley is similar to an art fair with a pop culture vibe. Attendees are interested in seeing a variety of handmade creations, including original artwork, prints, crafts, clothing, books, and much more. People usually go with the intent to buy something, even if it's just a memento. If you're wondering about the caliber or level, the Artist Alley section is curated to amateur and semi-professional artists. And from what I assessed in perusing the other booths, my very subjective opinion is that the organizers welcome a wide scale of skill level. Even though the pillar themes are comics and anime related, the event attracts people who appreciate talent and creativity in general. If you're an illustrator in a similar niche to mine and still ruminating on whether your artwork may be a good fit, I encourage you to consider them. Getting in is not a guarantee, and to improve chances in the application process, here are the tips that I was given by several industry veterans. First, apply early. They sell out. Some of them sell out right away. Provide a short bio describing your products or service offerings. This helps the organizers determine which category to slot you in, whether in the comic creator section, selling on-site commissions and related products, or are you selling paper or crafts from your unique artwork? Be sure to read the event website thoroughly beforehand as there might be restrictions on what types of products you can sell. You'll need an online portfolio which can easily be set up on a free website platform and some of the bigger events like a fan expo will in addition to a portfolio require your website shop or and your social media site. Also give some thought to the name under which you'd like your business to be listed on the event program. This will also help you promote your booth name and location. If you're wondering what type of table space to purchase for your booth. Common available setups are six or eight foot tables that come with two chairs and two exhibitor passes. Everything else is generally extra, such as Wi-Fi, power, insurance, or a premium location. And of course, the display hardware is all on you. Often there's no backdrop or a wall behind or beside you, and in some instances, not even a cloth or table skirt. You may consider sharing a table with another artist, and I'll talk more on how to connect with Artist Alley communities further in this video. Know that you may be required to pay upfront or a percentage of the total fee along with your application. So far, I've heard back at least six weeks prior to the event, if not sooner, though I've also heard that this can vary broadly by event. Once accepted, the next step is to sort out logistics. It's fairly straightforward if your event is local, though typically there's planning for travel, accommodations, where the park and fees, along with load in and load out procedures. You should also determine the best method and equipment to transport your exhibition gear to and from the venue. Next is determining my inventory. So that's my product, what I'm gonna sell, the packaging, visual presentation, the booth hardware, and my table setup. On my website, I sell original artworks and high quality glissé art prints. However, the experts advise that premium or high price point specialty items are slower to sell in the artist alley category. However, people do love to see original art and having a portfolio at your table for fans to flip through is an attraction. For prints, the general guideline for most vendors were these dimensions and price points. For myself, I had 23 different subjects and for the quantities I went with, 10 each of my most popular subjects and 6 to 8 each of my other subjects. And for formats, in addition to the print dimension, I also had postcards and folding cards. I didn't have stickers, however, I'm considering this in the future. It totaled to 188 printed products. I don't have a nice printer and so I outsourced all of it. Care in the presentation of your products does increase perceived value. My prints and folding cards are protected in a plant-based, transparent, resealable cello sleeve 
backed with a rigid chipboard. I also include my business card in there. I let people know that each print and drawing has an authenticity stamp on the back and they were each hand numbered, dated and signed. With purchase, I also provide bags in two sizes large clear bags so that everyone can see the art and small paper bags stamped with my branding. Ease of quick perusing is key. People tend to do a few laps to assess the entire floor before making a purchase decision. And so if people get a good first impression, they'll either shop right away or plan to return, typically at the end of or on the last day. The most basic and effective way to impress is to be welcoming and provide information about your offer. For me, I'd immediately highlight that my art is hand-drawn and traditionally with dip pens. As a conversation starter, a branded display such as distinct colors and or brand name is good for retention. There's of course business cards to grab and a visible QR code. People said they easily recalled the black booth with the ink birds. Definitely bring your own tablecloth, one that covers most of the table. Though you want easy access to your containers and snacks under the table, be constantly restocking and reaching down for items. So for the structure of your display, a popular choice are the plastic or wire storage cubes that you can assemble in any formation. I use the black wire cubes as a backdrop to hang sample prints on and binder clips with with binder rings to hang the prints from the cube wires and off the overhead banner. I have two tabletop baskets of prints with cardboard dividers for ease of flipping through. I splurged on a literature wire rack and a small table easel for other key pieces. These were really effective to catch people's attention. And for the backdrop, I opted for a telescopic banner stand. It's easy to assemble with the telescopic tubing and it packs small. I was advised to get the flat foot bottom over the tripod ones as being less of a trip hazard since the the neighboring tables are snug together and I hung a black cloth shower curtain as the backdrop. Height matters. Have your best items at eye level or higher so that people can see even if your booth is crowded. It's best to cover your booth overnight. I used the opaque bed sheet with plastic clamps from the dollar store and took the um, high value items back with me such as my portfolio, the cash and the card reader. At my first event, I went with the free mini square reader. However, it has limitations to payment types it accepts and my experience with it, I found it to be unreliable. It worked inconsistently. I upgraded to the $60 device, which is a chip and pin contactless card reader. Even if this is your first event, I highly recommend having a proper point of sale reader or you'll miss out on sales. I didn't purchase power or Wi-Fi at the event. I used my data. So it's advisable to bring a charger or if you need additional power like for display lights then bring a USB power bag. $470 was my cash float divided as such. I kept this in a money belt and reorganized it each evening. For transporting your gear, you can book access to the loading docks if you have a lot of stuff. I managed to fit everything into a 45 quart locking bin and a large gym bag. I stacked everything on this luggage cart from Home Depot. Read the event guide, double check the rules. Some restrictions vary by event or year to year, so look at the floor plan, especially the access and show hours of your event. Test your table display beforehand. I practiced my setup at home, then took photos as guideline to facilitate quick assembly at the venue on load-in day. Personally, I prefer to set up at the venue the night before, so that nothing is missed. I made a list of the extra items to bring, such as first aid, extra price stickers, and so on. A link to my list is available in the description below under the resources along with videos from other creators for additional perspective. In terms of earnings at these events, I'll do a follow-up video at the end of my convention season later this year with the complete financial breakdown. In my first event, there was a no profit because of my initial cost, but I did break even. In the second one, profit after expenses was in the $1,000 range and I aim to improve on this as I learn more with experience. As for measures of success, personally I gain a lot in terms of experience in running my own art business, networking in the industry, sharing info with other fellow artists, exposure for my artwork, and meeting the fans in person. That was the most rewarding and it was so much fun. From the convention website, you'll find their social medias and look particularly to their Facebook or 
Twitter because that's where they have announcements and updates. I joined the Canadian Artist Alley Facebook group and Discord. It's great for finding buddies for sharing tables, travel or accommodations. To get the insider info about events, you get lists of the suppliers, vendors and how to find other con events and basically advice on everything you might need. If you're going solo, you can look for helpers through these groups. I reached out on Instagram for help at my booth and once on site, the volunteer crew members can also lend a hand if you need assistance or stand in at your booth. For more ideas on table setup, a web search of Artist Alley display will bring up photos, blogs, videos to inspire you. In conclusion, Artist Alley is a great opportunity for amateur and semi-professional artists to showcase their work to fans. By keeping in mind the tips I've shared, you can increase your chances of success in your application and make the most of the experience. If you're new here and enjoyed this video, it really helps support my content when you subscribe and give it a thumbs up. Best of luck with your Artist Alley research and have an awesome day!